Hello everybody, welcome to my first round World Cup predictions. I'll be making four of these, one for each quarter of the draw. And here's the first quarter. So let's just get straight into it. I'll show the teams and who I think will win. This isn't this isn't saying anything bad about anybody, so don't take offence if I if I, <laughs> about who I think's gonna win. It's just it's just you know, it's just a bit of fun. So the first match is Stringer Bell versus Drick. Uh, Stringer Bell's gone Necro here, as you can see, a block mighty blow werewolf. The werewolf won't won't really claw, won't be doing anything against uh, wood elves. A wrestle werewolf, a guard fleshy, a tackle fleshy who will be doing things, and a block ghoul. He's only got one ghoul, uh, two re rolls, and thirteen players, so he doesn't have the third re roll. But uh, this is the problem that I had with with necro. They can't fit everything in, but. It's certainly a decent build and Stringer Bell's a great coach. And Drick Sassons caused by Drick. Wood Elves, of course. Uh, tackle Strip on the two dancers, of course. Wrestle uh, Leader, of course. And not Wrestle, but Kick on this catcher. I'm really not a fan of the Kick here. I think that's a strange choice. Uh, only one reroll and and going for an apothecary which you know could serve him well against 13 man necro could get some fouling in and with the uh, possibility of overtime that, that may that may favor the necro a bit but overall um you know drick's a good coach uh on ps4 i believe he plays mostly but uh, i feel like wood elves have the edge in this in this matchup so i'm gonna go the woodies coached by drick now we've got Striker OD versus Nuru, and Striker OD has gone Dwarves. And do you know what? I don't even I don't even hate this build, because Dwarves get a reserve normally that they don't really need, and they get a third reroll that they don't really need. So so trading those for a really good player for one drive, I actually like. I honestly think that this is better than the build that I'm playing against. I really do. It gives him a great weapon against other bash teams, the Death Roller. And he still gets, you know, guard and mighty guard and block and then he's got Mighty Blow on the Troll Slayer. I'm not sure about that when you've already got the strength seven Mighty Blow guy. Um I, I maybe would have taken three guard, but uh, I, I really do like the Death Roller build. I honestly do, genuinely, I'm not even joking. I really think it's a great choice because I mean, not not if it go, if it goes to overtime. Of course, you feel bad because you you they might use the reserve. But generally, dwarves are getting a reserve that they're not getting much value out of at all. And yes, and if it goes to overtime, they will get value from the third reroll. But this is a really it's a really inspired choice, to be honest. And he is facing Nuru with high elves here now. But the problem that I have with high elves is that they're not dark elves or wood elves. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's got the speed of the four catchers here, but a wood elf team would be faster than this and, you know, would have two rerolls as well. And I'm just really not a fan of wood elves. Yeah, he's got blood, he's got tackle, he's got a garter, he's got a leader, but I, do you know what? He, I've, I've got to back the dwarves. I mean, I think maybe Nuru is a better coach than Striker. To be, I hope he, I hope no one takes offence at that. Nuru does seem very good. He uh, nearly qualified from the Rebel qualifiers and won a different qualifier. Uh, but yeah, I think I honestly, I just, I just, re I really like the Death Roller build. <laughs> so there you go. I'll, ba I'll back Striker to win that one. Now we've got a a real classic here. Um, the early birds, G'day Nick versus Wolfbark with Wood Elves versus Undead. Um, two re-rolls, same as me, no, no Apo. And he's taken the same, exactly the same build as me actually. He's taken the leader thrower, a tackler, a, a tackler and a stripper and a block catcher. So he's taken exactly the same team as me. Exactly the same team. Um, so I think that's a good build, <laughs> obviously. And here's Wolfbark's team. He's uh, he's nearly gone, um, like Knee Proxy in the other quarter of the draw. He's nearly gone for the best you can get against Wood Elves. I think personally, the best you can get against Wood Elves is a tackle white, a guard white, 
and it blocks your hands go. I think the ability to stack is really helpful. He hasn't stacked, he's gone for wrestle on the other go, which makes his team probably better against non-wood elves, but only marginally better against non-wood elves. Whereas I think sure hands would make it a lot better versus wood elves. So I, I, I really do think stacking block sure hands was the play here. Um, but otherwise it's a standard undead team, four ghouls, three rerolls, fan factor, coach assistant cheerleader. I'm not sure whether three fan factor is better or not, but um, you know that this is the standard tournament build for necro. You know, uh, undead for four ghouls, and it's a classic. It's a classic battle undead versus wood elves. The 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 balance slightly favors wood elves um, in, in in the NAF format. So I'm gonna back Gadenik in this in this just because just because wood elves are really good, and he's gone the same build as me. And now we've got Andy Z versus Ungern in a human mirror. Human's very popular, of course, because they've got five normal skills and a double in this format, which makes them very strong. Str the strongest bash team, I, I think, and obviously others thought as well. Um, this is a bit unusual in that he's gone 13 players rather than the Apothecary. I would have had the Apothecary in case one of the Star Blitzers going down or even a Catcher or Thrower. But I, I can see the point in going 13. It gives them an option to foul against Wood Elves, certainly. And the, the skill package is what I expected people to go for. Three guard, tackle mighty blow, and a block ogre. Not what I would have gone for. I would have, I would have moved this mighty blow and turned that into a... Well, I've turned, I would have turned the block into a guard on the ogre, and the mighty blow would have been a guard on, the, on one of the catchers, and I would have gone without mighty blow game one. You know, just a max guard. I would have had five guard and a tackler. Um... But this is what I expected to be people to go with, you know, people like Block on the Ogre. I mean, it is good, obviously, makes the big guy reliable. Tackle Mighty Blow against all the elves and stuff, and, you know, re blitz every turn with him, and then three guard on the blitzes. It's, it's what I fully expected for, you know, more, to be the most popular skill package. Um, I'm not really not a fan of going 13 players, but I can see the merits of it. And Ungern has gone for... Um, the double as the guard on the catcher, guard on the ogre, two guards, and a tackle mighty blow. So again, he's nearly gone what I would have gone, which would have been guard on this blitz instead of the mighty blow tackle. But you know, mighty blow tackle is so so tempting for you know for game one. So I, I really expected people to go tackle mighty blow in that. I'm not going to keep going on about it for all the human teams now. Again, he went 13 players, which I would have valued the third reroll more, but. Like like uh, like Andy Z, I can see why he did it. Um, I think I'm going to back Ungern in this game just because I like more guard. Simple as that. Right now we've got one of my favourites to win it. Actually, Vela Hope here. He's just won Champs Ladder with humans, which is unbelievable because that's a very unfavourable environment for humans. Um, he's playing Parmenian in the first round. He's gone for twelve players, three rerolls Apo. Um, so, you know, exactly the same team. Everyone's gone for two catches, a thrower, four blitzers, and an ogre. Every, everyone's gone for that. Everyone's gone for at least two rerolls. It's just that some people have dropped the, you know, dropped a reroll for another player. Some have dropped the app over another player. But everyone's gone, you know, essentially the same team. And, you know, everyone's had probably, every, probably everyone's got at least two guard. Um, He's, he's chosen a normal block for the throw to protect against Wood Elves. I think that's a fine idea. Make, make your team a bit more resilient against Wood Elves. Obviously, you've always got to think about Wood Elves when you're building a team for a, a res tournament like this because Wood Elves are a terror. So, yeah, it's a very solid build. And uh, Parmenian's team here is, is Dark Elves. Now, normally you would say Dark Elves versus humans, there's only one winner. But the Dark Elves have only got four skills. And one of them have gone on runner, on the runner, leader on the runner. So he's actually only got three active skills against uh, Vela Hopi has six active skills. You know, he's 50 TV down. And, and I think if Dark Elves progress through the first few rounds, they become a much better team. They're still not bad. They're still Agility 4. They've still got some blodge. Um, they're not a bad team in the early rounds. But obviously they get stronger as the competition goes on. And the gap between tier one and tier two is is less and less. Um, two rerolls and an apple. I mean, this is a pretty standard build, I think. It, you know, you either go two witch elves and three blitzers, or four blitzers and one witch elf. Get the runner to protect against wood elves, and then two rerolls and an apple. You know, they're re they're the reliable 
they're the reliable but less powerful elves you know obviously what elves are more powerful they've got more movement and they've got the war dancers which are crazy but these these are the reliable pick and uh, they are very solid but you know Vela Hoppier, Champ's Ladder, he's, he's, he's brought Blood Bowl home to humans in Champ's Ladder. I've got to back him in this match. Okay, Blades Humans versus Silsay's Undead now. Uh, this is the absolute team that I expected to be the, the dominant choice. Three rerolls, one Apothecary, positionals as before, and the skills as before, you know, block, attack a mighty blow, three guard. This is what I expected to be the human team. Uh, choice going into it. What I expected most people to take. I don't think it's the best. It's not what I would take, but it's what I expected people to take the most of. I mean, it is obviously a very, very good team. Really good team being being tier two, and compared to tier one, like tier tier one so light on skills. Um, it's a really good package for humans. And he's up against Franco Ball Stars, coached by Silse. Um And and again, it you know it's uh, it's the standard build twelve. 12 players, 3 fan factor, 3 re-rolls, tackle, guard, block, and he's just gone double block. And again, I think 2 block makes you slightly better against non-woodies, but blocks your hands on the same one, makes you a lot stronger. So, you know, he, he's got humans. And the problem with, with Undead and why I didn't consider Undead for this tournament is I just think humans are just better. So I'm going to back Blade to win this one. Okay, next up we've got Vincenzo versus The Sage. Vincenzo has made Champs Ladder playoffs with, with a with a Kemri team called Made of Sand before. I, I know that thanks to an amazing VGP quote. Um, he hasn't used his double. He's just taken Tackle Mighty Blow, 3 Mighty Blow on a guard. I think, you know, I think that's a bit crazy. I would have definitely tried to, you know, use all three doubles on block Tomb Guardians. I think that would have made his team way better. Uh, so I would have started off with a, maybe a block Mighty Blow one and then just you know, drop one of these mighty blows. You'd have block, mighty blow, guard, mighty blow, mighty blow, tackle. I think the mighty blow tackle's fine. But yeah, I, I think, you know, I think it's crazy not to have block on them. But, you know, maybe he wants to have guard and mighty blow on them or something. Maybe that's his plan. But I would have really wanted block team guardians. But three re-rolls and, you know, all he really wants to do in this tournament is not have to play elves of any variety. <laughs> And I would have thought that Sage would have gone with Elves, Wood Elves, but he hasn't. He's gone with Undead. And, you know, he's gone for a very strange Undead build. Um, he's gone for 14 players. Normally people have 12 players. He's He's got less wasted TV and fan factor, but he's only got four fast players and only got four Agility 3 players. So while he's got a lot of men, he can make fouls against, uh, against Wood Elves, but also he's got a very slow team. Very slow and unagile team, uh, limiting the ghouls like this. I don't, I don't hate the two guard on the mummies, but again, he doesn't have mobile guard against wood elves. Sure hands on the ghoul um, is a bit of defense against woodies, but he's got lucky a bit in his side of the draw, not having many wood elves on. So, uh, but having said that, I just think that his team is tailor made for this Kemri team, and it's it's nothing against Sage whatsoever. But I, you know, is undead. I feel like you, as any bash team at Law TV, it's just a nightmare playing Kemri. You you just can't really get anything going when they just fully outstrength you. You know the way they do, and he hasn't even got the movement that a normal undead team would have. So I'm I'm gonna back Vincenzo. And the last match on this in this quarter of the draw is Chobaran versus Mister Light. Chobaran has Skaven, and he's. He hasn't stacked at all, so he's, he's got his options open to stack in different ways, like, for example, Claw Mighty Blow or whatever, later on in the tournament. But he's only got three gutter runners. Um, I am speechless, I think. <laughs> if he had gone 13 players, he would have got an extra gutter runner and he would have had a thrower to have strength three sure hands against Wood Elves. I think that's a very, very strange decision by him. Um, he doesn't have a wrestle gutter runner either. Normally, you'd have a wrestle one for you know sacking wrestle strip or you know later or whatever. But you know, generally you have four gutters and you have two with block and two with wrestle. So um, yeah, this is I'm not a big fan of his build three re rolls apo. But so you know, I, I don't know. I, I would have really liked to have seen the fourth gutter there. And also, he's playing against dwarves. 
And Mr. Light's a great coach, and Dwarves, you know, are likely to just beat the beat the crap out of the Skaven. And he's got four guard to do it. I like just going four guard. I mean, I would have liked block on the runner as well for defense against Woodies. Um, I like only one Troll Slayer. I like 12 players, three rerolls, and an apple. But, you know, this is what I mean. The yeah. air. <laughs> I really didn't hate the, the the death roller idea. The death roller idea is, isn't terrible. Um, but this is just your standard, your absolute standard uh, dwarf team here. And I reckon, I reckon they'll just steamroller. He'll steamroller with this team. And it'll be, you know... I don't want to say an easy win, but I reckon he, he he should he should he should go through. So yeah, there there you have my 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 predictions there uh, for the round. It you know it's just a bit of fun. I'm not I'm not having a go at anybody. Please, no one take offence. You know that everyone everyone in the World Cup deserves to be there. Everyone's good coaches. There's there's a lot of good coaches that didn't make it. You know so. Anyone could, anybody could be anybody, and and really, it's probably just whoever's the luckiest is going to win. To be honest, uh, any any of the sixty four could win, and any of these games could be. I could be completely wrong. Um, mostly, it's just been picked on which teams I like the more, you know. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.